everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We are bringing you another Reba recap. And uh, the first one that we did of the pilot and the second episode went pretty well. People uh, liked it. So we figured, well, let's just keep doing them. And I think that these Reba recaps are going to be less structured than like the Heartline recaps from the other stuff. It's just going to be like, whenever me and Jasmine have time, there might be an episode where we do an entire season. There might be one where we only do two episodes. We might This time we're doing three. Uh, you know, it's just, it's all fun. It's whatever we do, right? <laughs> so uh, that's just what the way it is. Uh, but yes, today we are talking about episodes three, four, and five of season one. And uh, I'm from Critical Race Fire, and Jasmine's here. Hey, everybody. How are you? I am doing good, you know, praying that the heat may slide, you know, lower down. <laughs> praying my car got out of the shop this week. Oh, no. Like this week. A lot is happening. I know. Week. I was just saying that uh, there's this horrible construction going on outside my house. And that means that the, uh, that uh, there's, the road has been completely closed off and now today i have no water <laughs> i'm waterless so this is about helping yeah. our summer situation y'all <laughs> <laughs> i don't know maybe it i are dropping some water wide. for you yeah. like you know red cross help 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 your girl out <laughs> yeah <laughs> well uh we we did get uh some a couple comments about the pilot Ooh, yeah our, our friend Regina Ross, she says, one of my favorite shows, the first three seasons, in my opinion, were the best. And I watched those over and over. And then uh, D- DJ O Dude One says, the, the pilot is one of the best sitcom pilots I've ever seen. So much charm fit in just one episode. So much emotional depth. Even with it being the first time we ever see these characters, even with all that, it's still really funny the whole way through why well, don't want to cry that was, that was, that was beautifully like written <laughs> no. i mean you should, you, dj dj dude why don't you come and join us on the <laughs> recaps you're really so i want to hear your top 10 now because i need yeah. to know the top 10 <laughs> pilot episodes of any sitcom yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well, let's dive in let's talk about these episodes because i do think these first couple seasons were really strong Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's just uh, like a really fun group of characters, and uh, and Reba. I mean, I can't think of. I'm trying to think of any other singers turned actors that have been. I mean, I guess you have someone like a Cher who you know goes on to win an Oscar. You have a Jennifer Hudson. There's there's people, but uh, there's not that many that uh, have have been able to do what she did you know what like we gotta throw Queen the teeth in there because she became she started as like you know being a rapper and up being have her own oh, sitcom yeah, yeah, you're right, like, you're that, right. that's yeah. queen right there or even will smith <laughs> that is true yeah you that's know, true music <laughs> right now so that's a good point yeah i guess there are more than i was thinking no L- no l cool j rapper yeah, that's true L- oh that's there's cute. a bunch of them yeah outfits. i guess i guess you're right you're right you're right it's not that special. She's <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she is uh, is just you know an incredible, incredible entertainer in every way. And uh, so yeah, so episode three is called "Someone's at the Gyno with Reba," and it's everyone has a hard time adjusting when Van moves his belongings into the Hart household on the same day that Reba discovers that the obstetrician she has chosen for her daughter Cheyenne will also be delivering the baby of brock and barbara jean so what did you think of this episode overall oh my goodness this episode i feel like i'm back at drop dead diva all over again like i'm rating this episode (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah this was just like you know you 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 know the husband's will begin his stuff is thrown yeah out on the yard it was just over <laughs> funny because vance was like yeah like the yard people they were helping me he got they grabbed all my socks i'm like no like we know why he <laughs> needs socks yeah i mean there were a lot of really funny little moments in this episode that that made it memorable 
I mean, even just like a little detail, like her coming into the kitchen with like eight grocery bags on everything, like that's such a mom move. Dude, you know, it's like she- how I don't want to have to go to the car again. So you know <laughs> what? I feel like this happens all the time. Like we look we analyze how many bags we got. Like yeah, uh, we're, we're doing this in one trip. I'm not going <laughs> yeah, back. Sure. I do that all the time with my groceries at Target. Like I'm gonna <laughs> take this up to the uh, in the house though, but. That cat food or that toilet paper, y'all go stay there the next day. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It really is. Yeah, you like layer them on your arm. You look like a scarecrow. <laughs> you know what? That's how, that's how we gain muscles. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I like yeah, Kira's just sort of like, uh. <laughs> you know what? Kira's like, you didn't tell me. Like, Kira's my girl. I yeah, said, that's, she's, that's this whole she's series. Really she's funny. my girl. I enjoy Scarlett Palmer's a lot yes. as Kira. She, especially these early seasons, because the later seasons. Oh yeah, she's it's a one eighty situation with her. Like I'm like, yeah. oh, well, yeah. it's hard because she so obviously had like an eating disorder problem. Yes, and uh, so it just makes it remember tough. that it makes it tough those later seasons. And I mm-hmm. think she she's uh, I think she figured out out of it. I, I guess she stopped acting in 2014. Okay. So that's probably. Yeah. On re- in, yeah, in season six, they actually even talk about it. Mm-hmm. About the eating disorder. So, you know, that kind of gets a little bit awkward. Um, but these early seasons, she is a pretty fun, uh, fun teenager kind of character. Very sarcastic. And uh, <laughs> she's and she's on cue with like with all her lines she's on cue. yeah yeah she is she is and uh, so then Van is moving in. I mean it is pretty insane that his parents dump all of his stuff under the under the lawn. I mean it's one thing to to kick your kid out because he's having a child, which is insane, but to like <laughs> literally. <laughs> dump all his stuff on the line. I mean, it's just... I thought like it was a breakup wild. situation. I was like, oh my God. That's wild. Uh, and so Cheyenne is trying to be considerate of, of Van and accept his stuff. And he's even got the uh, the exorcist <laughs> <laughs> weight machine. I don't know which one's worse, the exorcist or the cow cowgirl cheerleaders yeah. <laughs> definitely the cowgirls but I, I would think that they would have some like a shed maybe in the back or something like that i don't know or at least put it in the garage but well there's the no one in the garage to the car but still i would think you could have the you could have the garage you can have i mean you i would think you could have the car outside the garage and have the you know you can and then you can put up the the cheerleaders there as well <laughs> that part like they could be in the garage but but yeah he's he's got his his weight training device and the thing that's i think an interesting moment for this is that Cheyenne is is trying to not be a nitpicker she's not trying to not be a nag she's trying mm-hmm. to be a good good spouse but she also is just kind of also being sort of a doormat like not stating what she likes what she especially in such a tight space as that room you know and and she says that maybe i didn't want to drive him away like you drove away dad dude that broke me in that episode (laughs) i sat here like no like yeah yeah mom but reba she would got not like nine months later into the uh into the year like i had the baby what happened (laughs) yeah and she says you pretty much control everything around here why can't you let things go? And I do think that that is a challenge. I mean, I've never been married, so I don't know Neither. about that part, but just relationships in general, like what are things that you should just let it go? You have to pick your battles in any relationship, even a friendship. You have to pick your battles. Uh, and so which things should you just let go? Or, you know, which things do you need to be like, nope, I need to have a voice in this. I don't know. It's tough. You know what? I I love my best friend D. Shout out to my best friend. Like she's been married for two years now. 
been with her now husband for over like 12, 13 years now. Like uh-huh. I've seen their relationship up and down, left and right. Their compromises, this and that way. I'm watching it like play out like, yeah, but don't say that. I'm like, okay, like I'm watching it. Like I'm learning from them. And I'm sitting here like, wow, like it, it is a team effort. It is like, you know, compromising, but at the same time, learning your boundaries, learning how to talk, communicate. And that's the thing where, you know, that was the communication part. I think we talked about that in the pilot episode too, about the communication yeah. where everything was happening. That was happening here where they need that communication. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it is hard to know kind of, okay, what things, when do I let sleeping dogs lie? And when do I, you know, when do I say something? And, and I, I don't know, like, I think, I guess I would be inclined to say if it's something, if it's something that's causing distress over multiple days right Mm -hmm. uh and if it's something that that it was is in is is a controllable change right Mm -hmm. so like if somebody i don't know just like walks weird or something like that like this is they they can't change that you know like if it's just something you're annoyed by by the other person you, you need to grow up and and you know you are realize that that you also do lots of annoying stuff. <laughs> There's a great episode of How I Met Your Mother about that, where uh, where they um they start noticing all of these annoying things that the other person does. Like Marshall, he's always singing everything that he does, and and Lily is a loud chewer, and <laughs> and uh, Robin uses the word literally all the time, and and when somebody points out this kind of annoying habit that, that another person does, Ted's the overcorrector, and then it starts to drive you crazy when somebody sort of points it out. And so I think if it's something like that, that's just like, it doesn't matter, right? Then you just have to kind of let that go. But if it's something that's a serious problem that's, that's going on for like multiple days, then I think, okay, we need to have, we need to talk about it. <laughs> and also we have to think about it as well as that. This is the first time they're actually living together in the same room. Right, yeah. being separated where I can go to his house or you come to my house. Yeah. But now they're it's course, different. Like, it's different. Like, you're living in the same household. You're living in the same yeah. room. You're going to be cramped. You're going to like, you're going to yeah. like want your space, but then I want my space. And it's just more of like, now you're learning how to live together. You're going to yeah. learn your guys' courts. Just like Reba said in the beginning of the episode, like, Man, like you don't know my my Cheyenne. Like, like I know her. I've lived with her for 17 years. You're just living with her now. Like, you're gonna like you're gonna learn her like, like what she likes, what she doesn't like. This is not it for my room, stuff like that. So it's you know, yeah, they're, they're yeah. definitely learning. <laughs> well, and to Brock's credit, he says, as soon as Cheyenne says mm-hmm. that oh, well, mom drove you away with her nagging, he says, Look. Your mom didn't drive me away. Little problems become big problems when you don't communicate. And so I think when something actually is like a real problem, as opposed to, again, like just something that's a little, that's an annoyance or, you know, something that you just have to let go. uh, Then, uh, then, yeah, then when you don't communicate, then it becomes a big problem, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, people always say that, like, don't go to bed angry. Again, I'm not married. What do I know? But to me, that seems like really terrible advice. I I think that a lot of times you need to cool down. You know, maybe you're upset, you're frustrated. And if you, if you continue on, then you are going to say something that you regret. And sometimes you can't take it back. You know, you say something that you really regret, you know. And so much better to cool down <laughs> and then the next day, let's, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. And uh, so I, I don't know. That's just the way that I see it. <laughs> it makes sense. But communication is really important. It's really mm-hmm. important. And um, so, yeah, he has this, this weight machine and, and this, this, uh, the, um, uh, the cow cowboys, Dallas Cowboys girls, uh, pitcher, and they should name Go Van. <laughs> <laughs> I can picture him van like working out. So like I hear him like Go Van Go. I was like yeah. I, can, I can picture it everything. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then we have this whole thing about the gynecologist, and uh, they the, there was a, a a funny joke also from 
Cheyenne when she says, uh, when your marriage breaks up, you're just a loser. And Rube's like, what? Oh, I, I just meant when you're young. <laughs> I just remember young people. <laughs> yeah, I remember. It's really funny. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So then Barbara Jean, she comes into this this doctor and uh, says, let's everyone take a deep breath and visualize the beach. (laughs) She is kind of different in this first season, don't you think? No, No, she definitely is different in this first season. Yeah. You, get to, you get to see like you know maybe because i've seen it in, like since like years ago but like she's like you know i am like church loving this is who i am but she kind of yeah. snap back a little bit but like try to be you know this i am a good person i am this christian she's but. she's just a, in later seasons she isn't quite as as much of like a pushover and i you know mm-hmm. i don't know like she's just a little bit different this first season Oh yeah, no. She's the, yeah. she has she has the, the she has the, the the ditzy like you know personality of like I am the assistant like yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, so so Reba is mad that Brock uh, brought Jake to the gynecologist, and she's been giving Brock this like list of things to do or not do. Yes, Jake, and probably my favorite line in this whole episode is the uterus is not a toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really funny <laughs> sorry we had to take it there it, they said also it. when when van thinks that he's about to be examined i've never been to a gynecologist before oh my gosh yeah that was funny you know like and guys so- please go to a doctor once a year please <laughs> go to <your> bodies <laughs> well steve howie he's so so sweet in this role. I really like him as a fan. I, I know, right? Like he, I feel like every episode, I, he, he just grow. I go, I grow to love him. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And so Reba is after Cheyenne says this about her controlling everything. She goes to the counselor, Nell Carter, and she's the, and Nell's like, "Is anybody else coming?" She's like, "Nope, this is just me." <laughs> going and uh, she says get a hobby go to the movies and so she goes to the movies and basically the whole family like breaks down <laughs> like oh my god we're, dumb, we're hungry we're in this. like they're freaking out like this is what yeah. happens when your mother figure father is not in the home i'm doing this is my yeah. me time sitting for yourselves and the, the, i mean it's obviously heightened for comedic thing but that is definitely something my family because my mom had to have full bed rest for her pregnancies like we did kind of learn us older kids we learned to be pretty self-sufficient how to cook how you know get everything clean uh do all that uh that you know because we just had to you know and uh one of my favorite memories of, of as a teenager is uh we a couple times we did these cooking contests where we would literally spend like a month or more even like planning out what we were going to do. We had a theme one year. It was like a seafood theme one year. It was like, and uh, one year it was like a global cuisine theme. And I did Italy. Mm-hmm. My sister did India and, and we would make my parents pick a winner. And, but then of course they never would. And so then they would give us 
uh, each just like a small, like a little appliance, like a toaster or a, I got a bread maker, which is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Rice cooker that, you know, that kind of thing. You know what? And, uh, and it was, it was just it. so much fun because my, especially my brother and I, we didn't have that much in common. We were really, really different. And so, but that's one of my happiest memories of, uh, of doing anything with my brother is, uh, was this cooking contest. And it was like a smart thing because we learned so many skills. I learned how to make pasta doing that. I learned how to, you know, cook, uh, cook meat. I learned how, you know, there, it was a valuable skill thing and fun. And my parents got to have all this delicious food. So it was like, (laughs) win-win. Exactly. Like when the kids are cooking for us, we have like built-in chefs. Like (laughs) I love that memory. I do. So it's kind of like, (laughs) it's important. Like it's important that you teach your kids to be self-sufficient. Like if you're gone for dinner, they should be able to like do fine. (laughs) Oh no, definitely. I know like my aunt, she taught my, my three cousins how to cook. They're cooking efficiently. Like she was gone with two months out of my three cousins and the baby one, he's at home. He's doing summer school. Like he really like posted. Yeah. I made me some macaroni and cheese and uh, cast iron skillet. Did yeah. not call me whatsoever. I'm like, where was my slice? <laughs> yeah. So there do you like- have Do you have your specialty that you're the the you're especially good at making? Ooh, like like a food wise. Yeah. Like, oh, this is gonna be. Ooh, what is my specialty? I know for sure. Everyone, yes, all my friends, they come visit me. They're like, I want you to make lumpia. I learned how to make lumpia when I was, uh, it's a Filipino egg roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, With like cream learned, cheese in it? I don't put cream cheese in mine. I usually, I think I put like shredded cheese in there, but it's usually oh, like, okay. I, I usually do, um, I don't use, I do, I don't do parties. I do um, ground turkey or oh. ground chicken. I'll put the cabbage in there, shredded cabbage, shredded um, carrots. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to put a green onion in mine. With my best friend's eating it, I don't put it in there because she doesn't like it at all. I don't know, I'll put the cheese in it. Um, they I have them at Disneyland, but they're sweet. It's oh, like good. a pineapple lumpia. Now I'm invested to try this situation. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's like, but that's usually my, my, my go-to. Like, in my, yeah, my that sounds like, good. That's my go-to, but when it's holiday time, when it's Christmas time, <laughs> everybody hits me up for my gingerbread. Everybody hits me up oh. for my um, eggnog cookies. So <laughs> it well, if, we, if we ever do that, Hallmarkies uh, meet up uh, someday. We'll definitely have to have you cook for us. <laughs> yes, I am down for this. <laughs> I really want to. I it's something we've talked about a lot because yes. what people might not know is that most of us have never met. You and I have never met. Like mm-hmm. I've met Anne and a couple mm-hmm. of others, but I never. We were supposed to meet two years ago, but life situation happened. Yeah. I was like, no, but no, we're gonna we're gonna meet up eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to do it. But anyway, so she leaves her family. <laughs> They end up getting pizza, um, and uh, and so I'm trying to think what is my like what what people I don't know I have a lot of different things I don't think I have like the one thing but um I can make I make a good uh like pasta and sauce Ooh. spaghetti <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> maybe yeah. that would be my go to I don't know. See, and I'm picky now because there was someone to Italy study like years ago study abroad for college. Like I am picky about Italian food. Oh. And I'm gelato I'm gonna eat. I'm like, I can tell the difference. Yeah, was this made yeah. fresh? Was this out of the out of the jar? <laughs> <laughs> I make a good chili too. I love mm-hmm. that's one of my favorites to make chili, especially in the winter, because oh, when yeah. it's like you know, really freezing. Oh yeah, most uh, definitely. <laughs> hey i'm hey i've been learning how to make clam chowder in my crock pot and oh, I've been, I've yeah. been, it's, it's been it's been yeah not the manhattan um clam chowder like regular clam chowder like yeah i love me some clam chowder <laughs> <laughs> well so she goes to the movies she says this was the first movie that she's been to since jake was born you figure what jake is six seven oh, he's like seven yeah he's seven so oh my gosh yeah I couldn't. I I would. <laughs> she could. She could. She could even go to Blockbuster or go to um. Like I, I know, need my me time. Like I absolutely. I especially if she has two teenage daughters. I don't know why she couldn't have them watch. You know, like come on, come um, on, Reba. What are you like, doing? Like 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 she could, but look what happened. Shia is pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> 
but uh but then they have uh the um so then cheyenne apologizes to reba and reba says no more interfering not going to do it and uh, and she talks to van about it about the situation you don't like my poster <laughs> like i like it but not in this room yeah and uh and then it was a funny line at the end when she says could you stop put when he says could you stop putting potpourri in my underwear uh, <laughs> and then they look at reva and reva's like i've been under a lot of stress like i got i gotta p- put it somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so there we go that's this episode it is a pretty fun one it's pretty almost fun definitely one. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Esther Hatch and her new entry in the Proper Scandal series, A Proper Facade. Get all the swoon-worthy Regency romance you could want with this enticing new story. Nicholas Kendrick, Duke of Harrington, follows the rules of the tone meticulously. When he determines that Mercy Rothschild is the ideal candidate for a wife, he marches dutifully toward her along the courtship path. Desperate to extricate herself from Harrington's advances, Mercy concludes that there is only one course of action. She must push her intended into the arms of another woman. But when Mercy becomes acquainted with the man behind the proper facade, her plans come crashing down as she realizes that stiff and proper Harrington might be the very man she's been waiting for. If only she hadn't been so successful in her plot to thwart her chances with him. Get a proper facade wherever you purchase your books or use the affiliate link below. Go to estherhatch.com to learn more. That's estherhatch.com. So then we have episode four and it's You Make Me Sick. And this is Cheyenne has morning sickness. Brock tells Van it is just mental because Barbara Jean does not have it. Turns out Barbara Jean hides her sickness. Jake spends a lot of time at a friend's house, but the friend does not stay at Jake's. So this is, I think, a pretty good episode, pretty interesting episode, because you have this mom who uh, who evidently Reba was pretty good friends with, but doesn't want her son staying at Reba's house or being at Reba's house mm-hmm. because of this Brock. I mean, because of this, uh, because of this Van and Cheyenne element that's going on. And in, in a certain to certain degree, I can kind of understand where this mother is coming from. Like, you know, you've got a pregnant teen at the house that are talking about things that maybe she hasn't had the, you know, birds and the bees conversation. Things are coming up. Like, maybe you're not ready for that. But like, the problem is, and Reba says this to her, I wish that you had, you would talk to me about it. That's the problem is her like, not having the courage this is supposedly a friend of yours to say look i'm just a little uncomfortable we haven't had the birds and the bees conversation with you know with robbie yet and you've got a pregnant teen and i'm just it's just a little makes me a little nervous then you have that conversation that's the problem i think you know i definitely agree especially like the other thing about like it could be like the past or it could be the present now like these type of conversations are happening every day where like, wait a minute, it's a little taboo. Like, yeah. wait a minute. Like I, I don't want my child around like, you know, his other peer because their siblings are doing this and that and yeah. bad influence. Like we get that. We get the understanding like completely. Shoot. I know some of my friends don't let their kids spend a night at other people's house. Like we don't trust them. We don't know them. Like yeah. we know them, but not like that. Yeah. But for what Reva said was, it was true. Like, we could have talked about that. You could have known what was going on. I'm doing this every day. I'm currently dealing with it in my own house. Yeah. You're at your own house, but we can have these conversations so we can get the understanding. And I love how they handle this as women at the same time. Like it wasn't like catty or they were trying to fight or anything. It was just more well, like, like she was being things. a little catty. The, the oh, other she was, mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then like, they finally kind of, they figured out, you know, they figured out. And because I think that what I would probably do if she had had the the courage to talk to Reba is I would have probably gone to Cheyenne and been like, hey, when Robbie's over, can you kind of, you know, stay away? <laughs> like, yeah, or hang out at a friend's you know, house, or at dad's house, like, you know, in that type mm-hmm. of sense. Yeah. There's something, you can work it out. You can work it out. Mm-hmm. I, I I have mad respect for any woman that goes through pregnancy and goes through that with their body and brings a life into the world. Unbelievable. Uh, and, but Cheyenne is, is going through it. Of course I never have, but uh, this morning sickness is, is they, they called it morning sickness is what some liar called it. Oh, no. <laughs> like I had a few friends who 
you know, we're pregnant, my cousins and stuff like that. I know everybody's more things is totally different. Some uh-huh. bypass it, some are just worse, some are just like Yeah, some people some people feel better when they're pregnant. I've actually known people that 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 uh, their allergies got better, things mm-hmm. you know, that that had been bothering them kind of go away when they're pregnant. I'm like, that could be dangerous. <laughs> just want to be pregnant like, all the time. <laughs> you know what the one thing I tell myself, if I ever, you know, get pregnant or anything like that. I probably look at like probably my spouse, whatever, but like for nine months, I'm getting up seafood for this. For nine months, I better have seafood when it's baby comes out. I, I every time I'm like, I'm giving up seafood for this. I am sure if I ever were to get pregnant, I which that ship is long sailed, but if I ever were, I uh I think it would be bad. I would I know I would get super sick. And I just can't imagine like how horrible that would be for like months and months and months feeling completely nauseated like you couldn't even like just every smell every like that would be the worst and you know my mom when she when she was pregnant she didn't have I mean she had the bed rest but she didn't have like super weird cravings but uh with with Anna it was she wanted these ice cream sodas that my dad makes all the time so we would go and get (laughs) she wanted ice cream and then uh, with, I don't remember with Sammy, but then with uh, Madeline, her last baby, she wanted uh, pad thai, like Thai food, Ooh. Time, which was surprising because you think that would be pretty spicy, you know, and like, you know, kind of a snow. She wanted Thai food all the time. <laughs> See, when my, when one of my friends, Jessica, when she was pregnant, like she loved eating popsicles. So somehow I, I have her craving. So we will eat popsicles together. <laughs> And yeah, we'll yeah. watch Baby Mama. Like that was like religious oh, up until like she the was, Tina Fey. Yes, like we okay. we do that movie by heart. Like we were like <laughs> free time with the with the popsicles. Like literally, uh, up until she had her water broke. I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So then we have, uh, so we have Cheyenne. She's super sick, and Barbara Jean evidently isn't sick at all, and. You know, you can't compare. Like everybody's different, every person's yeah. different. In but, uh, Brock claims, "Oh, it's mind over matter," which is like a way to get Typical a serious guy. stare down. Like horrible to say. Uh, <laughs> you never would. You never would say anything like that to to a woman. That's for sure. And I think you can tell that this show is written by women. Mm-hmm. You really can. You really can yeah and uh, so uh then uh basically like brock talks to van and says like give cheyenne this pep talk and uh, and i like when she says i could smell a chicken when it was still on the farm man no like no literally like literally like when women are pregnant like i yeah i heard about it it, like literally yeah their smells are so intact i'm sitting here like dang i also Let like out. when van brings her the saltines in the in the ginger ale and she just smashes them <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> joanna garcia is, is very funny i think in this you know what let it out girl I, I, yeah. Not, that's a girl yeah um and i like when van says stop vomiting and she says if i could control it Wait. i'd do it on you oh, right yeah. now <laughs> that would be perfect like Turn, I go, I all switch, all switch. Shoot, give me one of those when when when, when it's time of the month. <laughs> give me one of those. Yeah. So Robbie is was going to come over for this camp out, and then all of a sudden the camp out's at the friend's house. And didn't you think that this mom looked so much like Danica McKellar? Well, I was asking the same question. <laughs> Are they like sisters? So much like, like her. I kept looking at my. I felt like, like I felt like she was in some type of nineties like lifetime movie and Julia Campbell I can't... is her name let's what see she's been in because she's a familiar face um let's see here she was on an episode of drop the diva let's see what, what else? was that how did we wait wait <laughs> what season hold on i feel like i've seen it i've Let seen her face see. i don't know crushed uh what's that one her... oh my gosh like this is yeah this this is gonna this is gonna like Oh, it was the one with the teens where the teen is accused of murder. Oh, yeah. That's it. Now yeah. I remember. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think she was the actual murderer. She was the, the, she the, the, was the, mom. the murderer. And now she's on yeah. here saying, I don't, want my, <laughs> I don't want my child to be at your house, Reba. <laughs> it's like she's just like a working actor. She's done a ton of different shows, and uh, which is awesome. Uh, I'm trying to see if she's done any Hallmark movies. Right? I thought like she could do a Hallmark movie. Yeah. She was in um, Jesus Revolution, which was actually a pretty good movie. Hmm. I don't see any Hallmark. She must not be up in Canada. <laughs> she must be in LA. Anyway. Uh, but she does look a lot like Danica McCuller. She does. Like, I don't know if she can hear us in the atmosphere, but can y'all both do a movie together? Like a yeah. mother and daughter situation? I'm down for this. You really should. They should. Absolutely. But anyway, she did a good job in the role in this role and uh, she finally says i'm not comfortable with robbie being at your house and then reba says suddenly i'm not comfortable with jake being at your house and uh, so she stages this like camp out with jake in their front yard which i don't know why couldn't they be in the backyard i didn't quite understand right was, was it that small like i need to know like what <laughs> happens going on? And, <laughs> and the that she's using a uh, a flashlight as the thing that's yeah. actually a good idea i thought about it. i'm like i'm thinking no turn a big <laughs> flashlight into that except for there's not enough heat you know it's sure not like no, no. but it was funny and and then uh let's see here where is it uh oh he says that singing is lame uh and she says this would be more fun for you if i was seven and you weren't my mom <laughs> <laughs> just cute I, I'm not gonna lie, I was singing the song with Reba. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna this song. <laughs> and she tells, so she finally says, I, I think our our kids have a nice friendship and I'm not gonna stand between that. And uh, and then the she she says she talks about the the orgy, the teenage orgy happening at her house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, and the squirrels. Very oh my funny. goodness. And, uh, and then, so then Barbara Jean tells, tells Cheyenne, honey, you got to perk up. You're bringing my party down. She says she's sicker than a cat with a five pound fur ball. I'm like, man, thing is that, thing is my cat didn't do you no know, fur balls yet. <laughs> it's our job to keep the men happy, which is ridiculous. Like they are <laughs> finding all happiness. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, in a sense, your job is to keep each other happy. Both. But mm-hmm. it, yeah, it's not the uh, the woman's job to to like they're not you're not responsible for anybody else's happiness. You know, you just have to try to do your best to love people. And since he's happy because he thinks you're happy, why would you want to spoil that with the truth? Let's do what women do best: fake it. And uh, <laughs> so is Barbara J over here lying. Ooh, I get it Jesus that did. everybody in a relationship has to fake it till you make it sometimes. I totally get that. Mm-hmm. But if you're literally like completely nauseated all day, like just pretending that you're not is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel and sick. <laughs> if he's happy because he thinks you're happy and you're not happy, then his happiness isn't real. Like, if he becomes happy because you've worked through this problem together, that's such a more meaningful version of happiness. That part. Yeah. And uh, so then he says, I hate seeing you this way when, when I can when I can't do anything about it. It's scary. And and Aww. she says, I'm scared, too. And that's why I'm saying, like, at the end of this conversation, they're like their contentment that they have together understanding is so much more meaningful than like everybody lying <laughs> exactly and it was just really touching too which is like mm-hmm. their like vulnerabilities being like laid out there it's yeah just- and brock says you've been lying to me and feeling sick that's my girl <laughs> the worst <laughs> we can move <laughs> The cool, crisp days of fall are calling. Fuel up for them with Factors No Prep, No Mess Meals. Meet your wellness goals in time to go back to school thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, 
Protein Plus, and Keto, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50. Use the code hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code hallmarkies50 at factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. And Brock says, you've been lying to me and feeling sick. That's my girl. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> we can move. <laughs> um so and then kira claims that uh that she's now popular because because van and cheyenne live at her house and right stuff, which is funny and cheyenne says that uh or van says cheyenne and i are in this together which is very sweet oh yeah so that was i think a pretty good episode Definitely. and then uh, our last episode was the weakest of the group. I think it's called the stakes are high. It's Van talks Reba into hosting the football team's traditional pregame dinner. But when Cheyenne accidentally buys a new brand of potato salad, the team believes that the break from tradition is an omen of certain doom, leaving Reba to save both the team and Cheyenne from disaster. And I don't know, this one's just a little over the top, I think, with the with everything like if and if you were doing steak dinners for all of your pregames that would be expensive i don't know where they're getting this budget from (laughs) what how much the boot because i mean every high school has a booster club they raise the money yeah no we're in texas we're in texas that's a whole different money pocket (laughs) i mean you got to figure that there were probably 30 people around total there give or take somewhere in that range right we gotta be realistic we gotta be realistic about this because i i can't remember i think it was like usually it's about a good like well i mean 50 people on the roster that's not including yeah but like at the at the let's just say 30 people at this at this dinner pre-game dinner and uh and if you were doing steak for each of them like if you got a good deal (laughs) Um, like you'd be spending at least it would be at least one hundred and fifty dollars just in steak, man, I think so let's let's they got the animal and cut it themselves <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean because you know, I think a package of steak usually costs around twenty five dollars. You shall do it. Three or four, and we got to think about these. These are hungry boys. Yeah, they're eating for a game. I'm like, who yeah. does this? It is a lot, and uh, and it starts out with this kidnap thing where they kidnap. Oh my gosh, they kidnap Van for the breakfast, and Shine says, "Oh, it's a stupid tradition." And and so yeah, I mean that's the the tricky thing of like trying to pretend you're still a high school student while being married and starting a family and everything. Like it is pretty tough. It's yeah, pretty I, tough. Yeah, I don't remember any of my friends who got pregnant. Well, I knew one friend for sure. She got pregnant after high school. Mm-hmm. Um, when she when she when she found out she was pregnant, we only find out too. We were like, what? <laughs> but. Usually that happens in college, like some some of the full players yeah. were married, stuff like that, you know, started having family. Like I saw that. But for this instance, I was cared. I was with I was with the little mallet thing. I'm ready to whack them all. Oh, yeah. Like I was I was here for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kira's gonna I'll, I'll whack him with the mallet. 
Where can we go now? That should be the because they sneaked the into the house and everything. Mm, they they snuck in the house all right with somebody's keys. I wouldn't do that in Texas. I'll tell you that right now. That part. <laughs> that part. And then Kimmy and I'm not gonna lie. Cheyenne should have uh, stepped up stepped up her game because that cheerleader with the short hair with the with the with the red hair was trying yeah. to get, went trying to get with Van and I didn't. I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to step yeah. in fourth wall like you're not talking to her husband yeah. <laughs> and so then it was i think a cute moment between van and reba in this where he kind of is begging he says oh he makes it hard to say no and then Cheyenne, i know <laughs> tell me about <laughs> it <laughs> but it was cute to see reba being kind of motherly towards van mm-hmm. that's nice uh and so there's the bible of pregame of this pregame dinner like it's this thing is serious like it, 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 it's, it's it's bigger than like all my like paper uh, i liked it though when she said uh a couple of nice boys came by and told me all about it like but as a as a mormon and well, a former mormon missionary <laughs> that made me laugh that made me laugh and uh, and so i then we find out barbara jean has wild a wild cat tattoo on her <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> funny and i also liked it when barbara jean says says the prayer that was very funny oh my god <laughs> only barbara jean I, I i don't know if anybody's from texas y'all be doing these type of prayers like i'm gonna I'm I'm pray over this yeah. food though, but we gotta pray for this friday night game i know yeah. you're gonna doing that so reba gets the wrong or cheyenne gets the wrong mm-hmm. potato salad and they just serve it and i mean the whole thing is just ridiculous i know that i do know that that a professional a lot of professional athletes are very very superstitious about things oh yeah definitely but, but still i think a brand i feel like is is a stretch mm, you could tell, <laughs> well well you can tell a difference between a potato salad you could tell like well, yeah. i know what this brand is well i mean i, I think it could taste different but is it going to give you bad luck just the brand i don't know i feel like people have <laughs> people have weird traditions like yeah, i need go. this down for this game i have to do this step before you know this acting like audition like there are yeah. steps with, to, with this superstition you step out of that bound or anything things get thrown off but we not believe mm-hmm. in ourselves with a higher power that's just me yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> well so then reba takes the blame and the, the the team is losing uh because you get to get that kernel you know it was so interesting the uh and when we were doing um uh when we were recapping square pegs uh this was an interesting thing there was let me find it so on square pegs there was this there was this uh there was because this so on square pegs there that the show was filmed in 1981 and uh, there was the rookie of the year on there named steve Sachs. and there's this thing called the steve Sachs syndrome said here that steve Sachs inexplicably became incapable of making routine throws to first base in 1983 committing 30 errors that season this is referred to in baseball terminology as the steve Sachs syndrome the fielder's variant of steve blast disease named after the pirates pitcher who suffered a similar breakdown of basic mechanics also known as the yips as his accuracy suffered fans sitting behind the first base dugout began wearing bat batting helmets as mock protection and uh, and said that evidently he was able to be completely cured of it uh and able to go on by 1989 he was cured of it but still that's six years that he was incapable of throwing to first base isn't that crazy my things happen like like, so mental things are so mental yeah it messes you up like like you believe in this like Thing, like people watching my thoughts or did you rock my underwear did you like no. why did you like and i'm like things happening like i thought that was so interesting fun and, fact of the day you, you wouldn't guys. think that something like throwing to a particular base you know for a professional athlete like i don't know this is, i thought that was so interesting no yeah everyone yeah. has like their it has their ritual if you don't do it correctly or you miss <laughs> it it's, it throws you off a little bit yeah, you're gonna yeah. have an off game so uh so then uh basically like reba gives him a talking to and uh and kind of the end of the episode but uh but yeah that's the episode i was the weakest of these three would you agree i never agree it's more it was more of a filler in my yeah. opinion like you know like okay i'm thinking like oh yeah i keep forgetting it's fall time right now i'm like oh yeah it's still <laughs> fall is still going but yeah no it definitely was a, definitely a filler 
for this episode. Yeah, I think episode three was probably my favorite of these three. <laughs> if anything, just for the, the uterus is not a toy. That mm-hmm. was really funny. <laughs> Don't worry. Episode, episode six gets real good just to let you guys know. yes well let us know if you're listening what you think of these three episodes we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comic section or on twitter and jasmine how can people follow you you can follow me on twitter and instagram at shreem16 s-h-r-e-e-m-1-6 great and you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes so be sure to check that out also, make sure you're following us at Homeworks Pod and Homeworks Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews for the show. We really, really, really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our Patreon group, which is the biggest way you can support us. You can be part of watch alongs and really fun. And we have the merch store. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Yay.